got to be able to make an assessment of, of who is standing before you. Um, and then based on what you feel like their talent level is, um, decide what the best protocol is to be able to quickly change, change their ball flight. I mean, you're going to have way more dogs show up than cats. That's for sure. All the cats are on TV, right? And maybe they're, they're winning the, the club championship or playing collegiate golf. So, um, But you're going to have people that come across uh, your lesson tee, and they've got good hand-eye coordination. You know, and if I'm watching someone in the first 10 minutes of a lesson, you know, I'm, looking for, I'm looking for patterns. I'm looking for patterns in flight and, of course, patterns in contact. Uh, and if I feel like uh, throughout a sampling of shots, I'm seeing more shots that create an unreasonable relationship between the club and the ground and the ball and, of course, the resulting flight, then I'm going to try and make some adjustments that get them closer to things that we might think of as common uh, or more old school uh, base fundamental movements. But the thing is, as a coach, you got to be able to do both. You got to be able to coach both people. Uh, otherwise, you're going to take one segment of the population and do them a disservice. I've had plenty of experience with cats and dogs in my life, and I know that cats don't like to be led on a leash. And that's akin to saying that if we treat them all as the same and try and move them in a certain direction, I go back to the statement that I used earlier, we are the proverbial person in a boat and trying to paddle it upstream. And so rather, I take the path of least resistance and paddle downstream to that person's abilities and try and enhance them within the context of who they are as a person. And certainly I get the same cats and dogs issue, but uh, the one person I, so, so I have only so much energy, only so much time. It's a capital that I'm spending to try and help these players, but what you can't help would be a dog with a bad mindset and a bad work ethic. That person you need to jettison because they're taking the time and energy away from the dog who's self-disciplined and wants to work or the cat. And I just feel like it's like the 80-20 rule. You know, you get 80% of the benefit by doing 20% right. Pick the students that are willing to work. Don't worry about if they're a cat or a dog. Yeah.